And it looks like things are a bit laggy on my end. Um, uh, so unfortunately, you might have to bear with me as we get through this. We will get started. So welcome, everybody. This is the CubeVert Community Meeting. It is the, uh, let me check, the 28th of February, 2024. Um, not 2022, uh, which unfortunately I sent out the, um, what was it, the SIG scale uh, meeting notes from last week. And Tyler got the year wrong. Um, I hope you all have a good day, wherever you are in the world. Um, we like to start our meetings here uh, with new people or people that uh, are familiar to the community that haven't introduced themselves, but like to take a moment to say um, just a quick who they are and hello and um, yeah, maybe what you're doing here and how we can help you. So if you'd like to just unmute and speak up. Hi, hi. Hello, hello everyone. This is Mukesh from India. And uh, I actually want to join last meeting, but um, I unfortunately missed it due to some personal reason now. So hello everyone. The first meet, weekly meet. Yeah. G'day, welcome. Good to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who's new that would like to introduce themselves? Yes, hello here. My name is Jan Schintag. Um, I'm from Germany and I recently looked into enabling s x for Kubert. So I just wanted to join the meeting and see what's uh, discussed here. Awesome, welcome. Um, what were you enabling for Kubert, sorry? The platform S390X or IBM Z. Ah, uh, right. Cool. Very cool. All right. Um, well, uh, at the end of the meeting, um, I will um, come back and just see if there's any questions you'd like to ask or anything you'd like to um, yeah, bring up to the community meeting before we finish up. So we will turn ahead. I've got a whole bunch of stuff here, um, including a bunch of Slack notifications. So the schedule check-in, um, I'm just going to go straight ahead to the agenda. Um, yesterday, it was supposed to be the version 1.2 release. It was unfortunately delayed. Hopefully, everyone saw the um, announcement on the mailing list. It's been knocked back um, to next week, uh, March 5th. Um, and the reason being there was uh, two late blocker bugs. They were fixed before Tuesday, but... We just wanted an extra week um, to make sure that you know we could ensure the stability of the release. Um, does anyone have any questions about that while I wait for this to load? All righty. Um, I've finally updated our events wiki. Um, there is quite a lot. Uh, most of them are KCDs. And for those of you who don't know, that is the Kubernetes Community Days. Um, so they're uh, regional events. Um, so I've got one coming up in Pune, in Czech, Slovak, Munich, Zurich, and Bologna. Um, and we've also got DevConf, uh, all things open in the United States, and Katana Days in Germany. And so all of those CFPs are currently open. A couple of them close, uh, what's that, next week? Um, and then end of March and up into April. So if you live anywhere near those uh, for those dates, um, yeah, the CFPs are open. And uh, if you need any help or like you've got a half-baked idea and you'd like a, a soundboard um, or if you've got a proposal and you'd like someone to have a look over it, um, uh, by all means, please ping me and I'll help you with that. I've also got a couple of upcoming conferences that we know that we'll be at which is KubeCon, um, which is in a surprisingly short time, and uh, DevOps Pro Europe. Daniel Hill will be presenting there in Lithuania. Um, I'll also plug, well, I'll actually plug this a little bit, but we've got a Contrib Fest. Um, it is on the last day in the afternoon of KubeCon, so I'm trying to get the word out uh, so that people don't uh, leave before KubeCon's over and they come to our Contrib Fest. We're getting some special swag made for it. Um, as an extra incentive uh, to entice people there. Um, 
Last week, the Google Summer of Code announcements for the accepted organizations went out. Um, and Qvert was accepted for the second year in a row. Um, this is really great. It was a, yeah, this is a quite a competitive field and they had a focus on AI and machine learning, which we don't really fit into. Um, so I think it's pretty great that we're accepted. Um, considering this and the ContribFest, ContribFest I just mentioned, um, if we could please keep in mind to use the good first issue label uh, whenever applicable, because we are going to have a bunch of people who are interested in making a couple of um, uh, you know, simple PIs to get used to the project, um, get used to our workflow, um, and also things that we could potentially cover in our ContribFest, which is a 90-minute session at KubeCon of various um, experience levels. And so the next month, month and a half, um, anytime you come across an issue that uh, you might be or would be a good first issue, um, please label it or ping someone who can label it. Because I think we still have an outstanding question about who's able to use that label, if memory serves. Um, it'll be a huge help, so thank you very much. Uh, similarly, uh, we are expecting questions from uh, potential candidates to students for Google Summer of Code. Um, turning up on either the mailing list or Slack. Um, if you could please direct them to the wiki link that I've got up above. Um, if then, if they're asking project specific questions to direct them to the specific GitHub issues. Um, and those are linked to in the wiki. Um, and if there's anything that's, I guess, not related to those more project things, uh, the mentors are Alice Frozi, Antonio Cadace, Lubislav Pivac, Victor Tosso, um, and you can also redirect them to me or Petr Hrachek. Um, I've just done a lot of talking. So I, I see that Dinesh has put something in the comments about Sivo Navigate. Um, do you want to quickly say something about that and give me a chance to uh, not speak? Uh, yeah, so Sivo Navigate is an event we as Sivo host now twice a year. Uh, we've just come off our event in Austin which had about 600 people through the door, which we were really, really happy with. Um, it is not a CIVO focused event at all. Um, while it's got our name on it, it's all about giving back to the community and being a great place for people to learn about cloud native in general. Um, I think I've mentioned to Andrew a few times about getting a Kubevert session in there, but never been organized well enough in advance to, to give the community enough warning. Um, but we've just announced our next conference is going to be in Berlin, Germany, on the 11th and 12th of September. Um, so hopefully plenty of time to to get some talks and sessions in. And um, we, yeah, I personally would really love to have a keyboard session there. We use it heavily. So getting you guys more exposure would be awesome. Fantastic. Um, Dinesh. Would you be able to, either in the chat or on the meeting agenda, um, put a link to that CFP? And I can add it to, um, I can uh, push it around the yep. Kubert community a bit. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. All righty. Um, so at the open floor, uh, this is from the mailing list. Uh, we have talked about this um, a little while ago as well. The um, Kubert client Python repo. Um, so this is an automatically generated um, repo. A little while ago, we started getting a couple of issues that we talked about in the community meeting here um, because it basically um, had it required a couple of dependency updates. Um, no one is actively looking after this repository, um, but it seems as though people are interested. So I put a call out last week. Uh, the man list is here. Um, looking for someone who is interested in potentially helping out looking after it is, a, I would think, a relatively um, low stakes responsibility as how I would sell it. Um, and we already have one person um, who's new to the community um, who is interested in, in helping out. Um, but we do kind of require a minimum of two maintainers for any repo. Um, so if there is someone here that is interested, um, by all means. The alternative is that we'll have to archive it and no longer get um, looked after. We'll have to start redirecting people to other resources. Um, so it would be good to maintain, but if we don't have any people to look after it, that isn't, um, that's just how it goes. 
All righty, moving into any pull requests. Oh, do we have any questions on that? All righty. Got a whole bunch of pull requests to look through. Let's see if anyone has jumped on any of these. So I don't know if is Ed here. He is here. Um, Ed, I'm, yes, I'm, yes. Only, I'm only putting you because I, I think um, you commented on this person's previous PR. And is, am I right in thinking that this, these three PRs that they've put through uh, broken up version of that original much larger beer. Yeah. I think you think it. Uh, it uh, I think he split it uh, previous big PR into smaller ones. Although one of them is very very big, but uh, but yes, it, I didn't. I don't. I don't know if I looked at this one specifically. I looked at the bigger one. There is one that got merged, and there is a, another one. It is pretty big that uh, I think he needs to rebase now. But this one specifically, I'm not sure if I looked at it. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. I, I got the impression that maybe this was, um, as you say, um, the split of the, the much larger one that we looked at the other day. I think there were many from him. Uh, you could filter based on his name and you'll see there are several. Yeah. We've got these three. Um, yeah, so this is a refactoring effort. Uh, I can't see from a new contributor. Oh, a comment from Lubo um, and no one else. And so, yeah, um, one of these is in fact really small, just to prove it to you. Uh, so that's the second one. Um, yeah, is anyone interested in helping with you these refactoring ones? I th think this might be the slide. I'm already in the review, uh, in the review list, uh, and I'm reviewing it. And whoever oh, is reviewing it, just, you just need to, I, whoever reviews it, it just needs to run some, uh, some of the job to see that everything is okay. I mean, you manually need to run the test. That's it. Perfect. Uh, Federica, I couldn't quite hear you, but were you looking at all three of them or one in particular? Uh, this, one in, this one in particular uh, is... Uh, I'm in the reviewers uh, list right now, so I'm looking uh, at it. Uh, but yeah, I, I can for sure look at... Uh, all the others. Alrighty, thank you very much. So I will leave that with you. Um, this one, Lee Yawood. I don't know if Lee's on the call. Great to see Lee back, by the way, um, after a prolonged absence and getting stuck into things. Let's see, uh, this hasn't been reviewed. So this is, uh, I think this is a refactor, just cleaning up a bunch of warnings. It's not too massive. Um, yeah, is anyone interested in taking a look at this and helping this get merged? Oh, uh, you're going to send it to me. I'll give it a look. Thank you very much. F Zero X. Zero X Felix. Guys in your crazy names. Thanks, Felix. Okay, another refactor. And I believe this is from a new contributor. 
I recognize the head. Let's bring up this function in storage snapshot to mobile functions. Uh, Alexander, I see that you're already um, potentially tagged as a review in this. Am I right to just leave that with you? Oh, and Alex as well. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Perfect. All right. I'll just leave that one for you. An enhancement. Doing the maintainability of, of code base. Another refactor in the air. All right, looks like it's got some meat on the bones. Uh, this also looks like it might be in the storage land. Yeah, Andrew, feel free to CC me also here. Excellent, thank you. Nope, F O S S. Um, <laughs> Plus it held. Every week it's a memory test. And this one is not actually a refactor. Um, about the VM export download command. And it's fixing something. Again, I might leave this um, with Alexander and Alex. It says you're very much in there, in their world. All right, we're getting through it. Uh, mailing list review, there was a question um, currently unanswered. Um, how to bump going version. So keep it 0.59 isn't that old. Um, yeah, is anyone able to, oh wait, oh no. Is anyone able to um, help out and respond uh, to this on the mailing thread? Is it still supported? It is until 1.2 comes out. OK. Was that a passive agreement that you were going to respond to this, Ed? No, I actually, I know that this, this is problematic in general, so I'm not. Uh... I'm not really sure it's uh, so easy. Usually we had, uh, uh, okay. sometimes it gets very, very problematic to bump. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes not. Yeah, it's we not uh, an easy task. We can, we can, we have a, a doc for updating the, the go version uh, and it should follow it. And, uh, but yeah, it does not guarantee that uh, it will be easy. Okay. That it? 
There is a there is maybe a bigger issue here that if you're saying that this is a supported version, then we should have done this. Uh, I mean, we should have backported such upgrade because it's, if it's supported, then we are supposed to update the, all the CVs and everything. So I'm I don't know how to. We need to think if uh, if it's possible. So we'll always keep uh, the Golang version up to date uh, and three version back. We need to check this out. Okay, well, I guess we so we, so we can just reference the document here as an answer. That was that will be the first uh, response to this one. Sorry, I did I didn't quite catch that. I don't know if it's audio on my end or um, or part of Zoom. What was that? I think we. And who, who Felix? Did you? Mentioned the document, right? Uh, yeah, I, I mentioned the, the document okay. that uh, Victor uh, shared uh, in the chat. Okay, so yeah, so maybe you should be saying if can someone just uh, answer him with that uh, link? What is the I didn't see the oh, yes, Victor, can you answer it with it? Yeah, no reply to the thread. I don't think we can do more more than that. I, the document is fine. It's just the problem is that sometimes it doesn't work well, especially with uh, with Basel. Most of the time we get Basel is uh, is interfering here, but there are maybe some others are using uh, some downstream project are using. One second. I mean, some downstream pro projects uh, that are taking cover, they are sometimes building without uh, buzzer. So. so along with um, providing this doc, if the if pain persists, do we want them to open an issue? So this is something that we can close up on our side? Do we backport this go bump versions? I mean, te technically, we still support point uh, point five nine. Um, but this is for so building cupboards, right? I don't know. I, I'm just asking because I don't know. Like so, we are we are basically the suggestion is let's bump the Go version to build in a released uh, version of Cupert. Can you repeat? Sorry. Yeah, I'm just curious if uh, we support bumping Go for a released version of Cupert. So backporting. For zero five nine fifty nine. That's another point. Yes, I I think it's a, I I don't think there is an agreement. I know that uh, we sometimes did it, but in I will say that the default will be the regular uh, default will be that you, you we will upgrade only on the same uh, minor version of of that release because because that's safer, but. But the, the problem that we are facing is that uh, I think the Go version is is supported only up to two years, something like that, right? So so if that if that date is uh, corresponding with the with with how long we are supporting the the third version back, then I guess we don't need to bump a minor. 
something like that. I hope I'm not confusing. And you understand what I mean. But yes, I think you are right. If if it's a, if they are trying to bump a minor version, it's for surely not something that we will do formally. Like like everything else, it sounds like it's complicated. All righty, I might just move along. Uh, we've got three quick little bugs to have a look at. Um, Federico, do you mind just muting? Sorry. You're at. Thank you very much. Um, all righty. Bug number one. Documentation for our make file. That seems fair. To, is anyone aware if we have any um, developer documentation for our make file? Andre, remember that uh, there is an issue regarding uh, the documentation of the build system and someone was assigned to it a long time ago. You can look it up real quick. Okay. Thank you, Aurel. Um, yeah, but I don't yeah. think we have anything that we can... Uh, it's only if someone will pick this up and documented but i'm pretty sure that there is no one person that knows them all so well it's nice to have i i agree but i'm not sure if if anyone has time to look into this because in the end, it's like code. It's like you either document it or not. If someone can pick this up and document it, great. Or is it something that rather than one person doing, um, a whole bunch of people can add comments to the bits that they're familiar with in the make file itself? Yeah, it's a good question. But uh, I think most of us, uh, when we work on the project and we need something, we we just start going through the scripts, going to see what's happening, and go up. And it's it's not always easy to to figure it out. And uh, personally, I don't have like uh, I don't see how how we will do that exactly. But I think the, the, the important uh, commands that are, it's like not commands, they are targets. The important targets are documented in other, in many places, like under the test, it's like how to build it. All of this is documented that you need to do make and that you need to do make generate, that you need to do make test, that you need to do make func test. All of these uh, common, uh, targets are documented they are just not documented uh, in one place in the make file they are documented in, in the in several places and I, I think it's fine but yeah the getting started guide would cover a lot of the uh, common ones So the getting started guide would cover a lot of the uh, common targets, basically. Well, this is not different. I will say that, let me uh, give it another angle. I don't think that this is any different than asking to document every function that we have in the project. It's I guess this is more uh, 
an entry point, which may make sense, but it's not very, very different from documented uh, functions. So I think it's it will be nice to have documentation, but I don't think that's like the the highest priority or uh, yeah, that's it. Would this be a useful exercise uh, for someone who is interested in getting started with Qvert as a kind of like a way of going through the scripts to write a, a comment for some of these? Um, maybe not all of them, but um, I think as Brian suggested, uh, the, the common set. Would that be um, like, is that a reasonable entry point, a good first issue potential, potentially? I think it would be quite hard to do it for a person that does not know the project. Yeah. Yeah, but it's. You know, I, mean, I will. I will ask you a different. Let me ask you in a different way. What will you gain if you do that? Like, like for example, you have make func test, which calls like ten other targets. Maybe I don't remember. We can check. What will be the added value for? Uh, to document it in, in words over looking at the code itself. I'm trying to understand. Um, didn't Aurel just say that it would be quite difficult for someone new to the project to be able to look at the code and figure out what it does in order to document it? Yeah, this is what I'm, yes, but I'm asking it in, is like, what is the added, what will be the added value for, for everyone else, even for new people that are coming in, that they will, uh, they will re uh, read, and uh, they will read in English what each sub target here is doing. I'm not just going into it and learning what it is doing. This is what I'm not. So for example, make fu the func test target is running the end-to-end -end test. How, how it runs the end-to-end -end test, it, it uh, depends on other targets that we can go there and check what they are doing. And then you, uh, what is asked here is to try to document what they are doing. But why is it important to write it in English and not to just go inside and just learn what they are doing? I think this is a complicated task and it's really it's very very technical it's not something that is well structured it's not like an uh, intelligent design so so therefore I would suggest to respond to the issue on that issue to the person who opened it that he will welcome to contribute to the documentation he will welcome to read about Basel Basel plugins and about the, the system architecture of the project, because there are a lot of things happening here in Hack. Uh, open API validations, uh, CI related uh, targets, uh, test related targets, like a lot of things. So it's pretty obvious that it's super complicated and the person who opens the issue just would like to, to get a, a, an easy documentation about it. He is welcome to open, you know, an enhancement for uh, for that. And anyone who can pick that up, who has the bandwidth, more than welcome to do that. Yes, and I will reference them to the to the contribution where where we at least write there what we need to run, like make make and make tests and make func tests. All of this, I think, it is referenced somewhere. It should be referenced in the contribution. No, I think it's isn't it in the in the contribution file in the in the project in cover cover. There should be a contribution dot md or something.
Maybe the process this this part. I have so. Maybe he's looking for something specific. For example, maybe he, he wants to know how to to use a custom build system to build Kubernetes, for example. Maybe he can be more specific about the, the issue. No, but uh, you can give them. I think this link is uh, is providing the the common target that someone is usually will need. Right. It could, that this looks the correct one. This is the one. Okay. Yes, if if like uh, from here, he want. I mean, this one he should understand what he needs to run in order to build the uh, the project, right? Yes. And to run the test and to do whatever is needed. If this one should give you give him the starting point to know now all the all the options that exist and all the all the other targets that we don't we ourselves don't know about them. I don't think that's that's like uh, if someone can if someone will have the time to look into it, great. But I doubt uh, it will happen. All right, that, I think that's I think that that works for me. I think that's a good idea, um, and I can do that outside of this meeting, so that we can run it forth. Uh, thank you very much. Two more. This question was also asked in the Google uh, Dev or Virtualization Channel. Oh, was it? It's by the same person? I think so, and uh, Alexander Welsh uh, responded. All right, perfect. All right, and if it's a different person, I'll, um, I'll just copy Alexander's response. Thank you. Last one. An example of the boot menu. Need help. Um, is anyone familiar with a uh, doc on the boot menu? Maybe CC Antonio because he's the author of the PR, but I think this is just about the UEFI or BIOS uh, settings. Sorry, mate, I didn't quite catch all of that. Well, I was I was saying maybe this is a good question for Antonio because it's related to his PR, um, but also I think the answer to the question is the boot menu is just the the BIOS settings. Oh, okay. All righty. Wait time is starting to run fast. Okay, okay. Um, are you able to uh, put a comment on that? Sure, we'll do. Thank you. All right. That brings us, I think, to the end of our this agenda. Let me just have a quick check. See if anything has been added. It has not. All right, as promised. Um, did anyone, before we go, have any uh, questions or comments that they wanted to bring to the group before we depart for the week? I'd just like to ask a general question on live migrations and if anyone has done any work or thoughts on live migrations with attached sands that are like iSCSI or similar that don't support read write many. But do allow sort of moving iSCSI targets. Do we have someone from the storage sig here? If that's the best place to ask, I'm happy joining. That call and asking. 
Yeah, I would ask there, uh, but in general, no. Because there's, there's a point in time during life migration where the uh, volume has to be attached to both the source and the target node. And if you you cannot attach it at the same time, then the one of the pods cannot run. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's even possible. Uh, we, we have been looking in uh, a storage life migration where you could actually have a, a new PVC on the target and the data gets copied, but you know that that's not what you want. It sounds like no. Um, uh if it's if storage is the best place, I think there's another call. I, I can join that and maybe we can chat about it in more detail, Alexander. Yes, yes. That's on Mondays. Okay, thank you. Every second Monday. So it won't be next Monday, but it will be the following. Excellent. Um all right. And uh yeah, does anyone else any have any questions or comments I'd like to um bring up to the group before we leave? I'll take that as a no. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining and contributing here. Um, it's been a very helpful session. Hope you all have a lovely uh, rest of the week, weekend, and we'll catch you all next week. Uh, that's a lot of weeks. All right. Thank you very much. And, yeah, version 1.2, hopefully, fingers crossed, 5th of March. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.